Machines are everywhere, and they're an important part of our world. They perform repetitive tasks with high speed and accuracy. They can load heavy things onto pallets that are later delivered to the stores where we shop. Machines are used to shape building materials such as wood and steel so that we can use them to build homes, furniture, and other things. Watch how these logs are shaped into lumber. Robots are machines. They can swing, bend down, and rotate. Notice how these machines move down to grab an object, move up and forward, then move sideways before moving back down and backwards to set it in place. The most basic mechanical motion is left to right, front to back, or up to down, one at a time. Even these motions require complex calculations. When these motions are combined, more detailed movements can be performed. So what makes these machines move? The answer is motors. Motors convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. When you connect a battery to a small motor, it gets electrical energy. Then the motor starts spinning, which is mechanical energy. Let's now explore how motors work by building one. Here's what you'll need. Two large, non-coated paper clips, scissors, about 20 inches of enamel-coated magnetic coil wire, two small magnets, a D battery, and a small piece of medium grit sandpaper. First, take your battery and coil wire and wrap the wire around the battery three times. You want this to be medium tightness, so the wire stays in a loop, yet has slack to slide off the battery. Leave about two inches of slack on each end of the loop, as shown. Here is what your battery and coil wire should look like now. Now gently pull the wire loop off of the battery as shown. Try to maintain the shape of the circle loop by using your fingers to support the loop and holding the wire together. Slowly take the slack of the wire and wrap each side around the coil at opposite ends, leaving about an inch of wire left. You should do this gently taking care not to break the wire or stretch your circle loop. This will be the axis for the coil to spin, so try to make these symmetrical as possible at the center of the loop for best motor performance. Your wire coil should now look something like this. Next, take your wire coil and sandpaper and gently sand the entire length of the excess wire. You might find it easier to lay the coil down on a piece of paper and sand the enamel off with the scrubbing mo motion. Either way, try to get as much of the enamel coating off as possible. The magnetic wire has this protective coating, but it must be sanded off in order to get current flowing into the wire by contact. When you are finished, the ends of the wire should look silver or copper and should be nearly free of all of the coating color. The more enamel that is removed from the loop, the better your motor will perform. Now take your two paper clips and bend them as shown here. Let's take a look at that just one more time. You want to try to fold the two paper clips so that they are identical as possible. The reason is that these paper clips are what the coil will rest on to spin, so the more identical the paper clips are, the better your motor will perform.
So here is what your paper clips should look like. Pause here. When you get them looking like this, press play and we can move forward. Now take your D battery and your rubber band and wrap the rubber band around it twice in the long direction. You want the rubber band to be touching both the positive and the negative terminals because this is going to fasten your paper clip holders in. Now, you will take your paper clips and slide them into each end of the battery as shown. Make sure that the paper clips are touching the metal contacts of the battery end. Adjust the rubber band so that it's holding the paper clips firmly in place while maintaining contact with the battery ends. Now adjust the two paper clips so that they are the same on each side. These will form an axis for your wire coil to spin, so the more level and symmetrical that they are, the better your motor will perform. These paper clips are conductors and will allow current to flow from the positive to the negative terminals of the battery when the path is connected via the wire coil. Caution! Do not touch both paper clips at the same time with the conducting material, such as a metal object or a wire. Current will flow through the object, which can make it uncomfortably warm to the touch. Here is what your motor should look like so far. Now let's complete it by completing the current path. First, take your magnets and very gently place them together. If you do this too quickly, they might break or pinch your fingers. Take this magnet and now attach it to the inside of the paper clips against the battery. Now, take your wire loop and gently place the ends of the wire into the paper clip loops. Be careful not to bend the ends too much or deform the wire ring. The current path is now complete and runs through the wire coil. In the presence of the magnet, creates a force which causes it to spin. Don't keep the motor spinning too long. Mechanical energy is being created by this force and this motion, and it may cause the wire to heat up to an unpleasant temperature to the touch. This can also drain the battery very quickly. So at this point, your motor should be working and your coil should be spinning, or at least trying to spin. You might see it wobbling back and forth due to the force that's created. Your motor may not spin immediately, and that's okay. Here's some things to consider. Is the ring off balance? Are the paper clips even height? Try folding the ends of the paper clips into tighter loops. Is there enough space for the ring to spin without touching the magnet? And are the ends of the wire straight? Take a look at the coil. Is all of the magnetic coating off the ends? Try cutting off any excess slack at the end of the wire. If it's still not spinning, give it a tap or blow on it a bit. Once you've gotten your coil spinning, try bending it. What differences do you see? Now pause here and take a moment to play with what you've created. Now you're probably wondering, how did it do that? When you connect your coil, electric current starts to flow through the battery. It starts at the positive terminal and flows through the metal paper clips. The current then makes contact with the coil due to the sanding of the protective enamel coating and flows into the coil. The current will flow through the wire and around the loops. In this case, you have made three loops, so the current flows around the coil three times and then exit the coil and flows into the negative terminal of the battery. The magnet creates a magnetic field that is perpendicular to the coil. The combination of the current flowing through the wire in parallel and the magnetic field crossing the wire perpendicular causes a force that pushes on the wire, creating the movement. This force is called the Lorentz force. When an electric current flows through a magnetic field, a force called torque is created that pushes on the coil which the current is flowing through and causes it to spin. 
The strength of the force is the product of the magnetic field, the current, and the length of the wire. Congratulations, you have just built an electric motor. Motors are in a lot of things that we use every day. There is a motor in your hair dryer, another one in the ceiling fan. There's even one in every hybrid car. Can you think of other everyday items that might have motors in them? So now we know what a motor is, but what makes the motor in an automatic machine move? The answer is math. Look at how this machine moves from left to right. The motor in the machine is what makes it move. When a machine moves, it first accelerates, or speeds up, until it reaches a top speed. Then it travels at that speed for a little while. Finally, it decelerates, or slows down, until it stops. The trapezoidal velocity profile is defined using three lines. A line sloping up, which is acceleration. The flat line, which represents maximum velocity, and a line sloping down, which is deceleration. Math is used to describe each of these lines as equations. Acceleration, constant velocity, deceleration. How do you think the trapezoidal velocity changes to get this slow speed. To make the machine go faster, we need to raise the flat line higher, which means the slopes of lines 1 and 3 will be changed as well. See how it works? Let's now slow down the speed of the machine. Watch how it moves now. We can change how quickly the machine speeds up to get to its operating speed by changing the slope of line 1. In other words, we can increase or decrease the acceleration of the machine by changing the slope of line 1. If the slope is steep, the machine will speed up quickly. If the slope is gentle, the machine will take longer to speed up. Note that in either case, the machine ultimately reaches its desired speed. Trapezoidal velocity profiles are almost always symmetric. Therefore, the slope of the deceleration line, which is line 3, is adjusted to match the slope of the acceleration line. So now you might be wondering how you talk to a machine to tell it how fast to go. Well, we program computers that are hooked up to the machine to talk with it. In this program, we write the math equations to calculate and tell the machine how fast it should go. Here is an example of a program that controls the movements of a machine. Let's take a quick activity break to explore how math can describe the way these machines work. Video games are controlled in a similar way, with math. Imagine playing a video game. Every time your controller hits left, right, jump, swing, or karate chop, the information about how fast you moved your arm, or velocity, is sent to the game to move the characters faster or slower. That's right, behind your characters is a world of math and the characters are now like the machines or robots we saw at the beginning of the video. So now we have come full circle. People come up with ideas for products and design machines to make them. This involves using math to determine how these machines are going to operate. Then we write programs that talk to the machine and control its motion using math. The end results are goods that we use in our everyday lives. So, keep learning your math. It's all around us.